can play baseball like your brother. I just want to make the company better. Brand, LLC, insure, have your tools, get your trucks and equipment ready. Understand exactly how to bid, price jobs, invoicing. You know what you do when you stay home around here? You drink. eat food and drink by the fireplace. Big Iron Boys with 25 bucks. Yo, Nick, any tips for not getting burnt out on a side gig slash studying while working a nine to five? Awesome seeing you in the MD crew in Phoenix. Great show. Uh, Appreciate you. Yeah, no burnout. Electrolytes, sleep. Snipping off the uh, the party days. Don't take too much on. Don't bite off more than you can chew. That's that's the worst. That's a really bad move. Any of you guys taking side work, the worst feeling in the world is taking on too many jobs and f***ing up. So don't do it. Um, so take, this is like a legit, I'll call this a, but don't overload yourself and then f*** you, three of your friends over. That's the worst. That's happened to me 10 times. It's not their fault. It's just them trying to be good guys, but don't do it because it, People really bank on you when you're like their, their hookup. And then you're like, oh, I got a guy, I got, I got a guy, it's good. Hey man, you're not showing up. And then it creates a rift and there's just problems. So don't do that. It's, it's, and it's not anybody's fault, but it's, uh, it's you know, don't, don't bite up more than you can chew. A lot of guys do it to try to be a good guy, but you know. Promises you and if your friend's like, why can't you help me? Just like, I will, just let me, uh, let me organize it properly. And bill for your time properly so you don't feel like a schmuck and want and burn out. So make sure you're not doing a lot of free work. Because that nothing will make you feel like shit more than working in a trade and not and billing out five hours when you worked on it for twelve. You know, like you know, travel and whatnot. So really, really get good at bidding and understanding your uh, your process, man. That, that, that'll that's that's really defeating. You know what I mean? It's like working all night for tips and you realize like someone you, like you lost the money. Yeah. Like you gave it to customers. They're like, wait, they paid with a card. I gave them fifty. Oh. oh. Tenth night in a row. <laughs> Elite Lurker with 20 bucks. Working insurance at my dad's brokerage. Never created a business on my own, so I lack the aptitude that my dad does. I would like to take over the business one day. Any advice for an insurance agent or agency owner? Thank you. Um, I mean, client services are the best. I mean, from what I've realized, like the guys who, I have like four friends who have done insurance successfully. The ones that are like, have done it, they're really like client focused. So they have every show in town. To be honest with you, buddy, I'd ask your dad. I'd ask your dad exactly what you'd want. Just in simplest, plainest, nice puzzle piece, autistic terms. Dad, I want to take this over. Tell me exactly what you think I should do. And then I'll come back to you in two weeks and I'll tell you what I've learned and what I think I should do. And then you tell me how stupid I am. Does that work for you? No, you take your costume off. That's probably what he's going to say. Yeah. Why don't you play baseball like your brother? Uh, we got and then he's like, I just want to make the company better. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that's that's realistic. But like, uh, high end clientele hooking up with um, payroll services, con uh, payroll and accounting services are really good hubs for like, you know, soft cost networking. You know, lit like payroll accounting guys help each other. Um, estate uh, like lawyers that can you know llc's and people who form, like uh, business formation lawyers and stuff like that um not better business bureaus even though they're still a little obsessed with being on boards which is a little uh, i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do that that's Cringe. a that's a note yeah everybody says join boards a lot of my friends who have dough they're like nick you should get on a board with me and i'm like of what he's like anything literally anything like the yeah. sailing board of New England. Yeah, like, let's play. Let's play Dungeons and Dragons too. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. It's. I. I, I know. Um. And it, I feel like the insurance guys like. Kind of tight. Yeah, I know. Like they're like. What, I'm like. What do you do? Like, dude, we go to a meeting. We figure out. Like, we get the dues for the kids. We figure out. We mix the best thing. We buy a new blah blah blah, and then we go drink. Do you get to say you're going to the meeting? Yes. And I'm old, the, uh, and you're old, a board old, member. Old guy alert. So whatever that is. I mean. I keep my eye on when I see people's like on boards. I know they're doing like this. It's like the sociopath thing. Like, oh, you're a crazy person. Oh, you're going for it. You're in your mid thirties on boards that are like sixty year olds. Okay, you're a psychopath. Hell yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, it is a maneuver. Just so when you see it, don't like, don't go. Ah, that's what that is. Bow tie guys. I know. I know. It's, it's lame. Board I know. What? I would join the filmmaking board. Yeah, I'm on the board. You? Um, they would never. <laughs> Dude, Barry has, is a legend. He was an extra on yeah. fucking yeah. Good Burger 2. Yeah. Back of Willie with 
25 Canadian. What's up, Gooners? Any general advice on growing up? I'm a 21-year-old small-town carpenter with friends and cities an hour and a half away. Thanks for the great streams and funny anecdotes. P.S. Some houses got me screaming and creaming. P.S. So he's 21. 21. Any general advice growing up? He's a small-town carpenter. He's 21. Hmm. What'd you do, Chris? Get it's your, pussy. It's your, get. <laughs> get. Get. Pussy. Get, pussy. get as much pussy as possible. I have a lot of as much as I can. <laughs> get. Um, That's what I would do. You guys want to see my new tattoo idea? <laughs> Mom. Mom. Heart. Arrow. There's my new piece. <laughs> Puzzle piece. <laughs> yeah. Puzzle this piece. my new get tattoo day. I tell you, I put it in my chest. You go to the bar. Like how I'm a carpenter. You ever heard of Jesus he's Christ? He's a, he's a carpenter. He's, he's a carpenter. A he's a great carpenter. He's a great carpenter. He built the universe. <laughs> yeah. He built. He built all of our worlds. You ever seen Bruce Almighty? Uh, but um, good for you, man. Good for you for asking the question. I guess right for being um, um Listen, man. Uh, take your business seriously. Uh, take take your your craft seriously. If you're 21, and you're identifying as a carpenter. That's uh, pretty pretty good, right? Those those are like green flags to humans, in my opinion. Uh, never met, you know, and uh, I would take that shit pretty seriously. Uh, advance in your trade as fast as possible. Become uh, infatuated with it and become uh, the really the best in your region if you could. At any at any means possible, work your ass off at a young age. Salt away your money. Um, and yeah, uh, work, work hard when you're young to figure shit out. And uh, I think your 30s and your 40s get easier. There's nothing more depressing than watching guys my age um, figure out that Aruba is whack. Yeah. I went to Aruba for nine grand, dude. I stayed at the Atlantis. Yeah. Oh, did you? Fran, Fran slipped and fell in Aruba, and she didn't. I don't think she ever followed through. She never about sued. Claim. Yeah. Some some Aruba. Hmm. Um, Jimmy John's when I was twenty-one. Yeah. So he's doing fine. Yeah. He's yeah, but um, and your friends are living in the big city. Go visit them often. You know, have a good uh, schedule on getting out there, planning it, on uh, being sort of regimented about going out there, not just being some you know. And um, you know, make it a point to go uh, get dip your foot in the pond, but you don't. You can you can lease there. You can live vicariously through them for half the price. True. And not get sidewinded. And um, yeah, I think uh, advancing in your craft. If you're serious about it, man, I think there's a ton of money to be made in the trades. Simply put, it's the the, the tradesmen of the new millionaires. I don't want to hear anything about it. I'll will fucking die on that cross. If you, you guys are gonna be able to go out there, kill it, name your own price, work your ass off, and make a bunch of money, make as much money as you literally want. I love situations like that. Car market's really good like that. When the market's and people are getting free money, go sell cars. You will make a fortune. I just did it. I finally hit one. I was like, yeah. And I've sold the cars in down markets too. Everybody needs them. But, you know, with tradesmen now, they're just so few and far between, man. So take that super seriously. Brand, brand, LLC, insure, have your tools, get your trucks and equipment ready. Understand exactly how to bid, price jobs, invoicing, payroll. Understand, like, get a decent grip on all of it. Pain with 20 bucks. What's up, y'all? Nick, in your best Trump voice, can you give me some advice on where to buy a home and move to in America under 300 grand? A 30 year old black dude, no hood, no hoods, please. Buffalo, New York, that's where I'd go. I'd go to Buffalo or Michigan, that's where I'd go. I'd go to Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'd go to. That's what. No, I'd literally, I'd probably go to like, Michigan and, and uh, New York is great. The Catskills and the Hudson. The Catskill Mountains. You're black. Mike Tyson also black. He was in the Catskills. What's he doing up there? Punching yeah. out farmers. DMX had a house in North Kingstown or. DMX like bowling. His name was Earl. They called him Earl. They said he's a great bowler. I'm not a bowler. I'm a golfer. I am a. Championship, <laughs> but I would go to. I like Buffalo. I like Syracuse. I like outside Pennsylvania. There's uh, lots of areas. Hunt for places. Pennsylvania is getting expensive, quite frankly, but it's a good buy. Pittsburgh, Rust Belt, heart of America, snowy. I'll tell you what. If you can exist in the snow, it's not organic, but you might like it. Uh, I don't know. I think snow. I, I, I you know, I had this thought about California my friends who get up in California every day you wake up and you're in a video game it's mm -hmm. just 78 and perfect out mm -hmm. you don't have to think about putting on a raincoat you don't have to think about driving good in the snow you don't have to think about anything it's like autopilot 
It is the and, and never mind the real estate market. It is the worst place to live in the world. New England seasonal climate is the best place to live. And I, I don't care. I don't care what the you say. It's the best. If you don't like snow, go f yourself. It's a lifestyle change. You allow yourself a vacation. You can you can uh, move your life where everybody at your work is like, yeah, snow, stay home. You know what you do when you stay home around here? You drink. eat food and drink by the fireplace. Oh no, it sounds like. Shit. <laughs> oh, that sounds like. Shit. And everybody's on the same page, like, oh man, snow tomorrow. Time to buy cheese. <laughs> Bread, milk. Time to buy, yeah, time to buy $9 blocks of cheese and eat it. I'm talking to everybody all the way up. Yep. And it's fun. Yeah. Snowball fights, fun. Uh, fun. Built in summer. summer camp of life. Build a snowman. This but is the four season climate's the best. Yeah.